we've talked extensively about the very first parable that Jesus ever gave. That is the parable of the seed and the soils. The very next parable that Jesus gave, and of course we talked before about why Jesus is speaking in parables, but the very next parable that he gives, there's something interesting about this parable. I don't think, or at least I haven't seen very many people talk about this interesting aspect about something about this particular parable. Now, this, this parable is similar to the first parable of the seed and the soils. This is the parable of the seed and the weeds or the wheat and the tares. And so let's go to that parable in Matthew 13, 28. Jesus presented another parable to them. This is immediately after they, he has explained to them the first parable and why he says the kingdom of heaven may become, may be compared to a man who sowed good seed in his field. Oftentimes you're going to see this statement. The kingdom of heaven is like, or may be compared to, or the kingdom of God, same thing. He says, but while his men were sleeping, that is the men who sowed the good seed uh, in his field, while his men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went away. But when the wheat sprouted and bore grain, then the tares became evident also. The slaves of the landowner came and said to him, sir, did you not sow good seed on your field? How then does it have tares? And he said to them, an enemy has done this. The slave said to him, do you want us then to go and gather them up? That is, to gather the, the tares. Do you want us to go and gather them up? But he said, no, for while you are gathering up the tares, you may uproot the wheat with them. I think there's a valuable lesson in that. We'll talk about that in a second. Allow both to grow together until the harvest. And in the time of the harvest, in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, first, gather up the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them but gather the wheat into my barn. Now, that's I think that's a wonderful, obviously it, came from, it comes from Jesus, must be a wonderful parable. But what does this particular parable mean? Now, this parable is only found in two of the gospels, in Matthew as well as in Mark 4. Very similar, he says, and he was saying the kingdom of, of God, same thing, kingdom of heaven or kingdom of God, is like a man who casts seed upon the soil and he goes to bed at night and gets up by day and the seed sprouts and grows. How? He's, he, how he himself does not know the soil produces crops by itself, first the blade, then the head, then the mature grain in the head. But when the crop permits, he immediately puts the sickle because the harvest has come. Now, the same parable, we've got a little bit extra information that's given. Notice what he says, though. He says he goes to bed at night and gets up by day and the seed sprouts and grows. How he himself does not know. In other words, it's going to grow. It's going to happen, but he says the soil produces crops by itself, and he gives kind of the order. First, the blade, then the head, then the mature grain in the head. Now, the reason why this is important is because those of us who are not uh, part of an agrarian culture, agriculture, we don't, you know, I don't farm. Most of you don't. And so we're not sure this. We've seen plants sprout and so forth. But one thing we ought to know or we should know about this is that when the wheat and tares are growing, in many cases, it's hard to notice. And even when you do notice, what's also happening is they, there might be some intertwining. And so if you pull up the tares, you're going to also disrupt and uproot the wheat. And you don't want to do that. And so you don't want to get into the habit of where you're so much in a hurry to take out those that you think are tares and inadvertently pull up wheat. Let the Lord do that. And then interesting about what he says, he says, allow them both to grow together until the harvest. You would think that the Lord would be concerned about, because in our minds, we're kind of having an understanding of what this is. There's something interesting about this. But before we get to that, you would think that the Lord would rather have the tares immediately taking, taken away from the, uh, the wheat. You would think that there's too much danger. And there is some danger in that. But he's stating still, allow them to grow together until the harvest. One is e that one they're easily identified at that time because we've already saw in the other parable the other description of it we see the the description the maturity of it and the heads will show and so you can tell you can discern the difference as they what as they mature similarly I would say with Christians as we mature you get to see the difference between a mature Christian and someone who is not a Christian at all but maybe they are playing the role or the part of but because they're not a mature Christian it becomes evident and they can be separated. But he says, allow them both to go together until the harvest. And in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, first, 
Notice who's dealt with first. First, gather up the tares, bind them in bundles to burn them, uh, and then up, I'm sorry, gather them up, but gather the wheat into my barn. So the gathering of the wheat is going to be after the gathering of the tares to be burned. Well, there's more explanation to this, and this is where I want you to see the the interesting part about this. So let's go to Matthew 30, same chapter 13, go to verse 36. Then he left the crowds, went into the house. Now there's other parables that are given, but after that he goes and explain this one. And his disciples came and said, explain to us the parable of the tares of the field. And he said, the one who sows the good seed, that is the son of man, and the field is the world. And as the good seed, these, I'm sorry, and as for the good seed, these are the sons of the kingdom and the tares are the sons of the evil one. So those who are of Christ, those that's the good seed. The tares, those are the sons of the kingdom. Those who maybe we thought, maybe we thought they were, were believers and not, but these are children who whose father is the devil. There's something interesting about what was just said. And the tares are the sons of the evil one. And the enemy who sold them is the devil. And the harvest is is the end of age and the reapers are the angels. So he's, he's giving everyone their position. He's telling us the cast is played by these, by the angels, the reapers, uh, the sons of the devil, the enemy. The devil is the one who sowed this and so forth. So uh, we can see that that part should be pretty understandable. 41, the son of man will send forth his angels and they will gather out of his kingdom all the stumbling blocks and those who commit lawlessness and will throw them into the furnace of fire in that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The righteous will shine forth as the as the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has an ear, let him hear. Now, there's something really, really interesting about what was just said. Notice all of the parts that were played. We know who it is that sowed the seed. We know who it was that sowed the, the, uh, the tares. We know who the tares are. We know who the reapers are. But what was initially sold? Let's go back to Matthew 13, 24, and let's pull this up. Matthew 13, 24, he says, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man who sowed good seed in the field. And while the men were sleeping, the enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat. But when the wheat sprouted, well, what we don't have explained in this explanation, this term wheat. Why don't we see the word wheat in the explanation? Remember, all we have is just the seed. Notice what he says in verse 37. He said, the ones who sowed the good seed is the son of man and the field is the world. And as for the good seed, these are the sons in the kingdom of the tares. I'm sorry, the kingdom um, and the tares are the sons of the evil one. But what about the wheat? He, he didn't explain who the wheat is. He just simply said that the, the seed, the good seed, that's the believer. Well, what about the wheat? Ah, well, here's the point. The good seed is the wheat. So if the good seed is sown by the Lord, by the Son of Man, by God, then what will they automatically be? What will they become? They will be wheat. There is no if and buts about it. The good seed will become wheat. That's not even a question in this. No one is there's there's no doubt about that the good seed that's sown on the soil will become wheat. Interesting to think about that. And so if you are actually sown by the Lord on good on good ground, then you will be without question wheat. Even though there is tares around you, doesn't really matter. What God has planted will come to fruition. Isn't that wonderful? We spend time thinking about the bad, but in that also is the good. Remember, this is likened to the kingdom of heaven. And so therefore you can take com comfort and solace in the fact that if you have been sown by God, if you've been born from above, if the word has been implanted in your heart, going back to the very first parable, then you, uh, according to the scripture, not only have you been sown as good seed, you are definitely wheat. Amen.